How's it going guys? Joshua Lefemi here, live in LA. Finally got my hair cut. First time since this whole pandemic thing started. We have the pleasure of hearing from one of our awesome channel teachers, Nick Koo. He's over in Sydney, Australia, and he's gonna actually tell us about a secret that After Effects has that I know a lot of you guys think you know about. Watch this video and you're gonna realize how much you probably actually don't know about it as far as the full range of capabilities that it actually has. So for those of you guys that don't know, I've actually been a fan of Nick and his work for about probably eight years. I'd always see his videos he did for Hillsong Conference. And then we finally connected about maybe three to four years ago. Then we recently started doing YouTube videos together. And it was amazing. But he's the type of guy that is a true VFX artist. He'll just start talking about common software that you feel like you know, but you soon realize that there's this hidden treasure trove of capabilities you had no idea the software could actually do. This is hopefully what this tutorial is gonna be like for you. But first, of course, we're gonna talk about Envato Elements. If you're watching this video, you're probably a video editor and Envato Elements is a video editor's dream. It's a subscription service that gives you unlimited downloads of the most incredible stock footage like cloud and fog overlays, aerial footage, fire, lightning, they also have incredible VFX packs, Premiere and After Effects templates, sound effects, royalty-free music, and literally anything you could ever want as a video editor. Just by clicking the link below, you will automatically get a free first month. You'll see that coupon for the free first month at the very, very end after you've finished signing up. And that's it. I use Elements literally in some regard every day. So I've got two tickets, one for me and one for you, and we're going to take a flight way down to Sydney, Australia. Nick, the floor is yours. Thanks, Josh. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode with me. Uh, we are going to look into something probably not that sexy, but, you know, it is a secret. It is part of the secret source for making your animations, your graphics, a lot of these fancy things that you do in After Effects just a little bit more sexy than normal. You're probably looking at a lot of animations and you're probably wondering, how did they do that? Well, there's a, probably a good chance they're mastering their keyframes. Now, there's a lot of ways to kind of master your keyframes, but one of the best ways is looking at the graph editor. Now, what is the graph editor? Are we going back to school? I was in school a very, very long time ago. Now, I'm still using graphs and I'm kind of glad that I still remember some of my maths or uh, math, as you guys call it in the United States. Anyway, let's get started. We're going to look at a couple of examples here. Now, Josh has already covered this in this tutorial here about how to make smooth keyframes. So if you want to get a sort of a breakdown of why we're going with this, you might want to watch that one first and then come back here. But if you're already kind of up to date, then let's go forward with this. So we've got um, this, this keyframe here. As you can see, this is a linear this is just a linear keyframe. So I've just put a position on two, I put two position keyframes here. We put one at the beginning here and uh, just one at the end here. And as you can see here, as we're watching the playback here, all equidistant, all evenly spaced out, super boring. I mean, maybe that is your cup of tea. Maybe your clients are asking for linear keyframes, but chances are they're probably not asking for linear keyframes. They're asking for the good keyframes. All right, so let's bump that up again to the easy ease, which we all know how to get there. Now, again, if you don't really know, all it is is just selecting all the keyframes on this and just going keyframe assistant and going easy ease. And that's what we get here in this regard. So as you can see here, starts a slow, speeds up in the middle and then goes fast in the middle and then slows down at the end. Now, as we go in, we're gonna have a look a little bit closer here, but as you can see, it's not remarkably, well, let me put this in a different color so it's a bit easier to see. Okay, as you can see here, you can kind of see that the keyframes are a little bit closer together here and then they get slightly wider apart and then they get a little bit closer towards the end. Now, why is that important? Well, we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there in a sec. All right, so we can see that. Now, we can all get easy ease. Now, I dare say, that's the bare minimum you should be giving your clients is the easy ease frames, but you want to give them a little bit more of a special blend of keyframes. Let's take a look here. This is also easy ease, by the way. Let's make this just a little bit more special. Now, Josh went into this a little bit before. So we're going to go to the position properties here. And we're just going to go and look at this thing called the, the graph editor. So here we go. This little button right here. We're going to click on this and we're just going to have a look at that. Now, right now we are in this particular view, which is the view that Josh had in his version as well. And all you have to do is go here, this little 
this little uh, little widget here, the choose your graph type and options and go to edit speed graph. And you can pull this in and pull this in. And this will, what will happen if you can, kind of, if you're, unless you're already with, you know, you're already with the mass is that it'll start slow, really, really slow, get really fast, really fast, and then really slow. So watch this. Which is pretty, is pretty nice, right? It's buttery smooth. Now, there are some other things you can do with this. I mean, what's nice about this uh, graph here is that it's very easy to understand. And I, I, I admit, this is a much easier interpretation of what's happening here. But this is only adjusting the values in terms of the time over, like the keyframes over time. Effectively, the beginning and end keyframes are exactly the same. We're just saying what the rate of change is from the beginning to the end and how that how those keyframes in between are being interpolated, if that makes sense. Or how how the graph editor is telling you telling the keyframes to behave. So what we can do is we can pull this back even further like this. And what we can get this is an interesting thing where we start basically at speed and then slow down towards the end. So watch this. So it looks like it just snaps in, right? And then it goes in. Let's I'll take this, I'll take this um widget off here. This little preview here, as you can show. I'm not sure if this has always been here, but now you can actually see the, um, what do you call, when things are actually uh, in pre, you can actually see the keyframe render as well. But if we, we'll take that off so you can actually see what's happening here. So you can kind of see, it sort of snaps in there and it starts at speed and then goes down. So as you can see, it starts at the velocity and then slows down. It doesn't start at zero, it starts at that velocity and keeps going. And you can kind of see here with the keyframes, um, let's see if we can see it. It's not very easy to see, but let's see if I can just pull, sorry, let me change the color again, yellow. You can kind of see it's like one, I think there's one there, two, three. You can see they're fairly widely spaced apart. And as they go, get closer and closer and closer, the keyframes are getting closer and closer and closer until it gets to like right there. So you can kind of see the, the drop effect of it as well, which is kind of fun, right? All right. so. That's pretty cool. And that's a really nice way to get some nice uh, motion. Again, you can also do this the other way as well. Um, we can also pull it this way and pull this. So what happens is it starts really slow and then comes to a dead stop. So let's do that. And then you can kind of see it does that kind of motion as well. Now that is that is probably uh, that is a pretty good way to do it. Um, I would say that if you're trying to get some really nice motion out of your uh, keyframes, the time graph editor is actually a really kind of easy and neat way to do it without affecting too much. And um, but there is a more complicated way, and I'm just going to show you that really quickly because this, to me, is a little bit more flexible, but it does have a little caveat in the sense that it is a little more tricky to use and. I admit I am, it does, doesn't does always work in my favor, but there are times when I need it. So let's have a look at this. Now we're gonna go to this yellow one now and we're gonna look at this one as well. So right here, as you can see, this is just linear keyframes as well. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna just put some uh, easy ease keyframes in it. So just so you can see what happens, we're gonna right click on this and go easy ease. And we'll go back to the graph editor and you can already see it went from a straight line to an hour curve line. So as you can see, it goes up and it goes up like that. Now this is a value curves editor. Um, so this does both value, this does both the value as the positioning value as well as the time value. So it looks at both the spatial interpolation as well as the temporal interpolation. And what that means is it just looks at both the space or where the position is as in where this is on, in the, as you can see, as I move it around, the graph starts to move around as well. So it actually looks at the space as well. Whereas if you went to the speed graph editor, this doesn't move. You can see the graph is moving because of where it starts, but ultimately the graph doesn't move. But this one does because it's looking both at the position on the, it's looking at the position on the, on the um, comp as well as the time. So that's where you get a little bit funky and you can get a few different things going as well. Now, the annoying thing is here, just with the position, is that you actually can't muck around the Bezier handles because uh, there are two dimensions to work with. And the graph editor doesn't like it when you're working in, if you're trying to modify one property with two dimensions. So what we've done here is we're gonna go here and go separate dimensions, right? 
Now, what's really nice here is we've got two graphs we can look at, and that's kind of fun because now we can start mucking around with both of them. And what's even better is that we've now got Bezier handles. So if we go up to the uh, pen tool here and we go to G and sorry, and press G and we want to get to this, uh, this thing here called the convert text vertex tool. And we're going to go down here and we're going to pull this out. So, and we can do something very similar to what we were doing before in the sense that we can kind of, um, still affect the time, but also affect the values as well. So what we can do is what's neat about this is that you can actually affect the value as well while affecting the time. So if you wanted to bring the values down a little bit, you can actually affect that here without having to go up into the canvas either. You can just actually bring down the values to where you want it to be. So let's have a look at this. So what should happen is that it starts really slow gets and gets really fast towards the end. It started really slow, but this is kind of the power of this particular type of graph editing is that we have a lot of uh, what do you call control over the behaviors of our, our objects now. All right, so as you can see that we've got a lot of ways we can we can sort of make things behave. So I'll just give you a really few, I'll give you a few nice keyframes. You can kind of, a few new, uh, I'll give you a few nice graphs you can kind of muck around with to kind of get what you need. But there's some really fun ways you can kind of do this to make it look the way that you want it to do. So we'll give you the general S curve. Now, generally S curves are pretty nice. So this is almost like an easy ease, but just a little bit nicer than an easy ease. So we'll start slow. Get a bit faster and then slow off here. Now let's have a look at this. Actually, let's move this uh, value back up again because uh, I did move it back too far. I mean, you could easily just drag this out. I mean, let's be honest, we can just drag it out here. As you can see, the value changes there as well. So there we go. Now we can even make it more extreme. So let's make it an even stronger S curve and see what happens. That's looking pretty nice. Let's make it even stronger. Let's pull these extremities all the way to the ends here like this. And let's really, really get that steep, steep curve. So the prediction would be is that it starts very slow, gets very fast, and then gets very slow towards the end. Watch this. Pretty cool, huh? All right, now let's do another one where we start pretty much flat like this. And then we start and we end up very, very slow. Oh, by the way, I'm holding that shift so that it actually stays on the same axis. Cause I actually didn't want it to be down like this. I just wanted it to be flat. So we're still getting a nice curve and it gives you a lot more control over the curves as well. So it'll start really fast and then slow towards the end. Not bad, huh? Now let's do the opposite way. And we're going to pull this all the way down. And we're going to pull this all the way this way. You can see it starts slow and then goes a little bit fast. All right, so that's kind of the graph editor in a nutshell. I hope that's kind of made sense. Now I'm going to just look at one more example just so you can understand where this can kind of come in handy. So I'm going to look at this bouncing ball animation right now, this bouncing cube animation. So right now I've got this bouncing cube animation and it looks all right, but I don't like that it has so much momentum and then it kind of just stops dead. Like, you know, and not many things in life will stop dead unless it's like a piece of, I don't know. It looks like it looks very unnatural and I feel like the floor should slide. So my feeling is that it should slide across. I don't know, maybe about there, right after on the final keyframe. So I'm going to go to the X position here and I'm going to go make it. So once it bounces, I'm going to make it slide across the floor like this, just across the floor like this. Now, maybe stop about there. So you could put an easy ease on it, which is, you know, it doesn't look very good there, as you can see. I really wanted to come to a very slow stop. So this is where the graph editor comes really in handy. So I'm going to go to the X position here and I'm going to get this last keyframe and we're just going to bring this graph editor up here and we're really going to smooth this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to the vertex thing and we're going to pull this out. And so it's going to really, really slide off like really slow and just to ease this off just a bit. So it doesn't look very, doesn't look clunky when it comes in here. So let's have a look at that. 
All right, so you can see here, it's sped up a little bit too much to word. I mean, that does look kind of cool, but it looks like it's trying to, it's being magnetized at the end. I mean, maybe, maybe that's what you want, but I want to be a little more gradual on that. So I'm actually going to pull this in just a touch because it actually is moving a little bit too fast here. As you can see here, it's a little bit less. There you go. The momentum looks a bit better now. I can probably even slow that down even more, just a touch. And this is where you can kind of use, you can kind of see where graph editing can kind of come in really handy here in that a sense that it helps you kind of really fine tune those animation things that you want to do. Anyway, guys, I hope that's kind of helped. Um, this is just an example of what you can kind of do with the graph editor. There's lots and lots of things that you can accomplish. You don't need to use it all the time. There are lots of kind of other ways to kind of get around the graph editor, but occasionally, and especially when you do a lot of animation or motion graphics, you will need to dive into the graph editor at some point because Ultimately, you need to adjust those keyframes. Anyway, guys, thanks for listening. As always, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below for Josh or I. And if you want to just stop by and visit my Instagram page where I just post a lot of experiments and just things that are kind of cool, come over to the IG page and I'll chat to you there. All right, see you next time. Nick, you're a freaking boss. That tutorial is crazy helpful. If you felt like this was a helpful tutorial, Tell Nick down in the comments. Thanks so much for watching the video, guys. I actually have two additional videos that you've got to watch. And remember to get your free month of Envato Elements by clicking the link below in the description. And lastly, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And as always, remember to keep it chill.